But I've got to ask you the question because it's something that a yeah. lot of people talk about and, and, and Don <clears throat> has to address it himself as well. A lot of criticism comes his way because he doesn't sound this, how he did in his, his 20s. I mean, um, he's faced a lot of criticism. He, he answers back. Yeah. I mean, what, what's your say on, on the way that Don, Don sings now? I always would, you know, when any time this subject came up, I said, Don, you're, you're you know, however old, sick at the time we did this record, I'm like, you're 68. I mean, it's not fair for anyone to expect you to be singing like you did when you're 20. Yep. And even if you could, really, are you going to start like doing high screens at 68 years old? Is, I mean, that's not who you are at this point. You know, just be you, you know. And, and, and I think that this is a wonderful depiction of, you know, you can music is, is emoting, right? It's portraying an emotion, right? You don't have to scream at the top of your lungs in order to do that. I mean, if you look back to the old Doc and stuff, is it really him screaming at the top of his lungs that transferred the emotion mainly? Or is it the quality of his voice and the, how he delivered the lines and the and the uh, the lyrical content? You, you know what I'm saying? You could. There's so many bands where the singer screams his head off, but the songs stink. I mean, does it matter? So whenever I hear someone saying, oh, well, he can't sing the high notes, they go, does it really matter? Let me ask you, here's, let me give you an analogy. Um, certain artists paint with a, a ton of colors and they may be able to make it a beautiful painting out of that, right? But then there's other artists that can paint with a pencil, draw with a pencil, and it's just the most beautiful thing you've ever seen, right? So it's not necessarily how many colors you have in your box of crayons, right? It's what you do with it. And I, I think just from a melody and lyrical perspective on this record, I think this is the best, some of the best stuff he's ever done. I mean, if you listen to the to the ballad, um, Never Give Up, um, I, I, I said to him, Don, I, I think this is one of your best vocal performances ever. You know, it just carries so much emotion in it. Yeah, high praise indeed. No, so, see, yeah, you've known him for you've known him for a long time i mean how does he how does yeah. he take that criticism because i think a few years ago it sounded like he was a bit spiky about it but i think he's a bit uh -huh. more laid back about it now um whenever it would come up i would just this is the, the discussion we would have is just what i just would say to you i'm like you know anyone who says that it's ridiculous you know that that has nothing to do with how much emotion you transfer in a, in a musical composition how how high you sing and so for a guitar player are you transferring more emotion by how fast you play some guys can play one note and it's just like, wow, yeah. right? Play one note, play one note and play one note. Great. You know, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with playing fast. Obviously I do it too, but you know, when, when and how you do it, right. It's just all, it all is about what is being carried forward in, in the music, the, the emotion of it, you know? So we're mentioning the new album, Heaven Comes Down. It's uh, the band's 13th album. It's uh, your fourth album with the group as well. It's out now. It's got some some really good reviews. I've got a couple here to read out. Blabbermouth said, the most enjoyable album the band have made in a long time. Ultimate Classic Rock says, the whole album rattles windows in a good way. I like that one. That's really nice. Uh, uh, so tell us about cool. this. You said it was written during COVID time. So so tell us all yeah. about this new album. Well, on this one, see, my biggest problem with like um, Pro Tools has always been, I, I was never able to, overcome how to do drums and in the you know i had studios in the past but i always had i had a drum machine like this little roland r5 or whatever and i was really good at programming drums on that and um i lost the power cable to it and i threw the, the whole unit out and and i never was able to overcome like how do i do drums and pro tools how do you do drums and pro tools i got programs i couldn't figure them out i mean loops i couldn't just couldn't figure out how to do it so i never finally my tommy henriksen who's still a good friend of mine today who I played with in Warlock. I, he was at my house. I'm like, Tommy, man, show me how to do drums. He's like, yeah, it's easy. He's like, he, he's like, you got some samples? I'm like, yeah, I got samples from wherever. He's like, okay, pull up. He showed me here. You take this, put it here. You just build one little piece at a time, and then you can duplicate it and add fills. I'm like, that's it. And I, once I learned how to do it, I was on because I had amassed such a huge collection of stuff I've written in my handheld. Like, anytime I'd, I'd write a, an idea, I'd record it onto my iPhone. To the notes you know and um sorry about that so oops, yeah, sorry um uh, you know i would just start going through, and, and i would label them like oh good idea for docking you know so i just started going through those and i was like so excited because now i was able to do drums i had a bass here because don left the left the bass for me and i'm like wow i could do full full-on demos 
So I just started like recording like mad because during COVID there was not, nothing really else to do. And I really got into like myself and, and to, into the writing process I, every day. I was writing even in the morning. Like I used to think I was just a night owl and I would, and I, I did this would usually come at night, which sometimes they do like in my twilight or in my sleep, you know, but I started, I was watching a Michael Shanker video and he's like, yeah, I write early in the morning. I was like, wow, how does he write early in the morning? So, you know what? I started like, um, as soon as I get up grabbing a guitar and I found, you know what? That really worked. I'm, I'm actually clearer for music in the, in the early morning. So I would just work all day, come up with ideas. I like something, man. Okay, put put this one down. And I would demo full demos. Um, some of them like complete from A to Z, the whole thing. Um, and a lot of those, I, I did that for a lot of the songs. Other ones I did just till the solo section and then finished them later. But for like Gypsy and Fugitive, I demoed those from start to finish, sent them to Don. Mm-hmm. You know, later on, he came out here after the vaccine became available. And then he worked here. And like the incredible thing with Don as a writer is like, he, we set up a mic for him. And first listening of like Fugitive, I put it on, boom, he starts singing the, the lyrics right, right off the cuff, like just like that. And some of those parts he sang right there off the cuff are on the album, are the actual recordings, you know? Oh. So that's how it went. That's how we did this one. Don, on on uh, Santa Fe, Don that, did that alone. I had nothing to do with that one. Um, and on Like a Rose, that, that was a track that Don had. He had music to that and lyrics and melodies. And I rewrote the, some of the music. I rewrote the guitar track to that. That's how we did this album, out of necessity, because there was no other way to do it with COVID. <laughs> you know, it some correspondence, yeah. Yeah, that was the way, wasn't it? But in terms of the timing then, um, was it COVID the kind of... I don't know, gave you the impetus to make the record because I think that the previous records you'd done had been like a four year gap between and obviously between COVID and the last album was, was maybe eight and we're a few years on from then. So was it COVID that gave you the kick to, to do this new record? Uh, I think COVID gave, personally gave me the inspiration to do it. But but I, I'll be t- quite honestly, what gave me the ability to do it was Tommy showing me how to program drums into Pro Tools. No, I'm dead serious. But without the ability to do that, it was going to have to be done. You got to get an engineer into my house to work. And we, you can't because there's a lockdown. So how are we going to do this? So see what I'm saying? Whereas always in the past, if I had an idea, I had a Pro Tools studio for, um, for Lightning Strikes Again, because we recorded a lot of that guitar tracks, all the guitar tracks in my apartment, actually, when I lived, where I lived at the time. But Don would hire an engineer that would sit with me and record everything, you know? So I didn't have to deal with that. But on this one, because of COVID, we couldn't do it like that. No, nobody could be around anyone. Mm-hmm. So it was really getting over that hurdle of learning how to how to program drums for me that led me to be able to do it. So given and everything I wanted you, to do it. I was gonna say, given everything that you've talked about there and, and you learning the process and being really hands-on with everything. So you must be incredibly proud of this record then having having finally got it finished. Yeah, I'm really proud of it. You know, when you're when you're in it, we finished it about a year ago, you know, okay. or something like that. Yeah. So I, I didn't listen to it for the for like a year because by the when you finish an album, like you know, Don always says, uh, records aren't uh, finished; they're abandoned. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so when we uh, abandoned the album, you, you, at that point, you know, like I've heard each mix, you know, so many times. It's like, in, you know, we had we had mastered this record four different times it's like okay do you like one two three i'm sending it to you now you know it's like by the time you're done it's just like i i don't want to hear this anymore you know Mm -hmm. i got i got to get away from it so when i got back to it which was like two months ago or so i I started listening to it again i I started listening to it again after not having heard it for so long when we were going to shoot the video for fugitive and i'm like oh my god i don't know how to I don't have to play any of these parts (laughs) you know i don't don't remember i have to learn the lead i don't know what i did um so i started listening to it again and then for me a lot of the songs started taking on a life of their own like they became their own entity and i think once that happens that they be you know they they become their own thing which is really good like you hear it with different ears when you don't listen to something for so long you know you can listen back to it and you can hear you hear it from a different perspective a fresh perspective you know and that's how i knew i really wow i really i really liked what we did here 